There are a number of ways to make shadows and highlights in OpenTunes. The most basic way would be to manually paint in all the shadows. To do this you would make a, a palette for your shadows or your highlights. And then you would carefully paint in the shadows and try not to overwrite your lines. This is a very inefficient way of doing this and probably one of the least effective ways of doing it in open tunes. A slightly more effective approach would be to draw your shadows in while doing the line work by drawing in lines where your shadows and highlights will be. So in this method you start off with the line work and then when you get to filling in the palette you can fill in both the lights and the shadows. This is the most common way of doing things in traditional animation and it is unfortunately also a very time consuming method. Digital applications like OpenTunes give us a whole range of modes in which we can approach this kind of problem. If we go to the FX tree we will see that there are lots of options. There are things like the Tunes color blending nodes. If we look under the light nodes we will have the cast shadow and body highlight nodes which can also be used for a similar effect. There is another option that is more flexible than these and that would be to use the visible matte in node. This node uses two layers and what you're going to do is you're going to use your primary image or your animation itself for the mat. So in this case this shape will be the mat that we are using. We will plug our mat into the down node because the mat will always be at the bottom and then we will create another layer for our highlights and shadows and we'll plug that into the up node and then just delete its connection to the X sheet. We're now going to paint the color that we want into the up layer and to do this we will have to add a palette. After adding the palette we will just add a color. This color will be the color of our shadow in this case and once we've picked that color we will then paint over our tool. Whatever is painted will now be a shadow. In this case I'm just going to fill it and then this entire area which is filled will be where my shadow is. Now if we click on the preview render button we will see that it has masked the second drawing to the original object. So drawing B which is at the bottom defines where drawing C will be shown. We can now paint shadows slightly more quickly because we no longer have to worry how accurate the shadow is outside of the original shape. So unfortunately the shadow effect which we have now is not exactly what we want. So in order to fix this effect we are going to need to bring the lines forward. To do that we are going to add a palette filter node. Then we are going to change the actions to keep. and we're going to change the color indices to 1 and then we're going to plug the original node into the source. Once that is finished we are going to get an over node and we are going to plug in the palette filter into source 1 of the over node. We're going to plug our visual mat in node into the second source and plug that into the X sheet. So now we have our render as we want it. The palette filter over here is basically pulling out the outline of the original drawing. If we hide the effect we will see the, only the shadow. If we hide the shadow we will see the results of the palette filter operation only. Now if we chose to deepen this effect we could actually modulate the line by the shadow as well. But that is not something which I am going to do in this tutorial. We are, however, still going to improve on this effect a little bit. So first I'm going to make some space to work with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give the shadow a little bit of a blur. 
we're going to go to the FX tree and we're just going to select the blur node. And then we are going to get draw in C and we're going to plug it in so that the shadow is going into the blur. We need to plug the blur in before the visual matte effect because we want to have the effect on the shadows and if we plug it in afterwards the effect will not be what we want. We plug it in and you'll see that we now already have a blur on the edge of the shadow. We now have both control over the intensity of the blur of the shadow but another thing which we have control over is the color. This way we can now change the color of the shadow at will and if I was to change it to be bright over here we should get a highlight. So with this highlight what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the color and I'm going to change the alpha channel and just increase the opacity and that way I can get a much more subtle effect than just the hard color. I'm also going to then increase the blur a little bit and If you want to skip this time lapse, you can go to 8 minutes and 48 seconds in the video, and you will see the network which I set up for this character. I've kept this character reasonably basic at the moment, and the network is just slotting into other effects which I've already placed on the character. I've chosen to put both the highlights and the shadows on a single column and in a single level. You can do them in separate levels, but it will not make a huge difference overall, as you could always use the palette filter to extract the shadow and the highlight separately. I've now added the shadows to the character, along with some basic room lights. As I stated earlier, they are all done on the same level. This makes no real difference, although separate levels can be more flexible in certain circumstances. They are all done on this level, over here. And then they go into the transparency, then into blur, and then into the visible matte end node. This goes in beneath an external palette node in which the character comes out of shade and into highlights. So you do not actually see any of the shadows and room lights while he is in the shade. But when he comes out into the light, the shadows and the room lights are then visible. And then I've extracted the lines so that they are on top of everything else. I have not yet modified any of the lines on this character, but I do plan to modify them in future. 
then we can take a look at the final render and he should have both faint highlights and shadows after he comes out of the dark.